Hello everybody, how are we doing tonight? Sorry I'm a little tardy for the party. I had to find my little iPod. I use that when I'm tying flies as my uh, visual so I can watch what's going on in the chat. And I was using it um, earlier today, or yesterday rather, and I didn't return it to the bench here. So what had happened is, is it was upstairs and come to find out the battery is dead so we're running just a tick behind so how's everybody doing tonight let's get this uh, here we go so we got a little something different tonight we got um, we're gonna be tying some uh, that's some blah, blah blah hold on let me get my words together we are going to be tying the Tom Sue's Hopper. All right, the Tom Sue's Hopper is a hopper pattern uh, that I thought looked pretty neat. Um, it's a uh, foam grasshopper. And what we do with that is, or how, to, how we're going to make it is, uh, in order to make it exactly how it's supposed to be, you need the uh, punches, you need the cutters. And uh, lucky for me, I happen to have some cutters uh, ready and accessible. And I even got the camera set up. Everything's ready to go. Uh, these are going to be some Tom Sue's hoppers tonight. Uh, we're going to punch out some uh, bodies. We're going to punch out some legs, at least for the first one, show you all how I do it. Um, and then we're going to, yeah. We're gonna just tie some hoppers. Um, give uh, everybody a few minutes to quick check in. I need to get my phone up and run, or not my phone, but my iPod. There we go, we got power now. That way I can see what's going on because my computer, if I'm sitting at my bench, my computer is you know, back here to my left. Everything can't fit at the bench, um, but it is what it is. So let's check in. We've got Andreas. Good evening, Josh Anderson. Good evening, J or NC Doc. Good evening. Hello, everyone. Jessica. Hiya, babe. Um, Jess is in the house. And Richard. Do -de do. Good evening. Are you guys still on the road, or have you guys pulled over? I'm assuming uh, whoever's tuned in is not actually behind the wheel uh, so yeah it's been um, an interesting day it was kind of a, a wonky weather day uh, it's nice and cool since uh, we, I don't know we had a front come through and everything temperatures are dropped I think the high was in the 70s we had a big uh, rainstorm push through yeah, and been, oh uh, I gotta hit the mirror we're going to get a loop-de-loop here. Sorry about that. Um, anyways, the temperature's dropped. We got some rain. The river's up. All right? So, um, Mr. Anderson's going to soon find out what the uh, deal is with the Mississippi when she's flowing at 7,000. Um, yeah, we definitely need to hit the water soon. And I'll let this weather settle, let the river kind of find where she needs to be, and so on and whatnot. So, the old man is in the middle of North Dakota, heading east. All right, well, let's go ahead and slide on over to the bench and see what we got going on here. Hopefully this works just fine. All right, there we go. All right, who's with me? So here we go. This is this is our hopper. I already have existing um, YouTube videos of how to tie this, and I've tied this in the past. Um, I think with a Project Healing Waters uh, program. Um, oh, I'm so used to the camera being up there, <laughs> so. 
It's just a little foam hopper and I'm going to show you all the different uh, bits and pieces that go into making this hopper. And I have the capability and the capacity, maybe not all at once, but imagination's your limitation. I make these in green tan and we saw the black one here. So uh, I really like the black ones. They're very kind of cricketish. I don't know. They float really well, all that foam. So we're going to go through it step by step by step. So from the top, um, let's go ahead and go over the foam. So the body consists of two sides and the two sides are going to be a two millimeter black foam. Now this foam is, it's not a magical foam, there's nothing special about it, but the key component of it is, is it is a closed cell foam. You can find foam, it might float for a minute, but if it's not a closed cell foam, it'll start taking on water and it's going to start getting pretty heavy pretty quick. So we have a two millimeter for the body and then we drop down to a one millimeter we'll use that for the legs I already have some of these cut out punched out um, and the thing to do with these is, is punch them out in bulk you sit down one afternoon and you just go bananas all right now we go all the way down uh, we'll have one of these uh, at two or not two it's a 0.5 millimeter and I believe it's called the pernotum pernotum I believe that's how it's pronounced um, it's just like a little shield on the back of the critter um, and then we have our uh, variety of wing material same stuff it's it's not the same stuff but it's also a closed cell system um, I, I've seen sometimes you can find packaging that is very similar uh, and you know like I keep saying ladies and gentlemen imagination is your only limitation um, and this I have uh, clear kind of exposed to uh, this kind of a olive speckled so I have the bits and parts of, or you know, different sized foam sheets to correlate with the different colors. And let's go ahead and go over the cutters here real quick. Let's set those to the side. So, all right, here's my cutters. Uh, they come in this, or they come with this, nut, or I think it might be just be an option. I don't know if you just get the whole thing. I don't remember if it came with the uh, cradle, but... I also have some other cutters. I have some mayfly wing cutters as well as uh, beaver tail bodies. And there, there's all sorts of different cutters. So this is my Tom Seuss hopper. This is size six. All these punches work together as one unit, right? Check it out. This is like our cookie cutters. All right, so the first one we're gonna use and we're just, on our first one, we're just going to punch a couple of bodies. All right. Also, it comes with this nice little mat. You can see when I flex it, all the different, you can tell I've definitely have used this one many of times. So a nice little rubber mat. And um, I'm actually using a granite coaster happens to be from the Minnesota Council of Airports. They had a meeting um, in St. Cloud in 2015, apparently. I think my VFW, we did a flag. Uh, we posted the colors for their big meeting. So anyways, let's go ahead and punch some of these out. How's everybody's doing tonight? Let's check this out. Ben is in the house. Good evening. Thanks for coming in. It depends on who you get it from. You can purchase with or without the caddy exactly that's what i'm talking about thank you ben are you familiar with the the river road creation um actually they have their own um fan of river road creation um facebook page so let's go ahead and just get this started we're gonna pull these out 
and this is just a two millimeter foam. All right, and the trick for me is to try to do this without looking into the camera, making sure we're relatively centered. No, I mean, it's not, not rocket science. Let's take the body, push down on it. And another bit of advice I will give when dealing and working with these cutters, as tempted as you may be to use your bodkin, uh, sometimes the pieces and stuff get stuck in there. Don't go at this with the metal because that's essentially a razor blade that's shaped and epoxyed in, it looks like. I mean, it's not rocket science, but you know, it's the quality control. All right, so Ben says, yes, he is familiar. I bought the cutters and made your own caddies. Cool. All right, let's just do another couple more because I know I don't have any of these extra bodies just hanging out. I know I have extra legs and such, so we won't have to punch more than just one set of those. And actually after doing this for quite some time, you know, just punching them out, punching them out, mass producing it, you know, the, the palm of my hand started to get a little stiff and sore. But, you know, like everything else, you just take your time with it, line it up, add a little weight. And I think really having this solid, you know, with the, having that solid granite underneath, that rubber, it really helps. Um, you know, this isn't something you'd want to sit there and necessarily do uh, with... Uh, with this in your lap. Let's say we got one, two, three. Let's go one more. These are great patterns. I've caught smallmouth and rock bass out of the Mississippi on these. I caught a largemouth. One, two, three, four. Let's just do one more. Make it a nice even six pack. Large mouth over at my practice pond, Secret Lake. And being a size six, you know, they're not that big. They're not heavy. They're nice and light, but you can get some wind resistance. All right, so there's that batch. All right, so here we go. It's just this simple. Look at that. They all are going to come off together. We'll just pluck these off. There we go. And unless you have a really good eye, I recommend just putting it right back into its package. And I'm not saying the only foam to use is the stuff that's available through River Road Creations, but I don't know, it only makes sense to use their cutters on their foam. Um, I do have other foam scraps and stuff, but I found that with at least with this pattern, it's really good having um, the actual components. All right, so we got a little pile of legs. What can I put these in? All right, what's next? We got some legs. And again, uh, these are gonna be, let's see here, one millimeter. One M&M. A little bit thinner. Let's see our legs. We got one, two, three available. So I need to punch out, how many now? I need to do 
two, four, six, eight, nine. I need nine legs. Ever seen a nine-legged grasshopper? All right, let's do this. Let's find our best method. Line it up and give it a push. And there's a two. And if you get really good at this, you really minimize your waste and you can really maximize um, your foam. And guess what? The frugal fly tire is seldomly bored. So as you can see, as we punch our legs out, what are we left with? Some other fun shaped bits and pieces. So let's see, we're at two, four. And if I had infinite amount of time, I would probably just go ahead and knock a whole bunch of these out. So we got enough for our let's see, two, four, and these just rip right off. Six. I can count, yay. All right, so there we go. That's our legs. Those are all just kind of plucked right on out. And the part that, that's um, that right here that, I, I, I cut this towards the edge so they would rip off. Um, if I had flipped this the other way, so, and punch just punch this way, I would have the tag end on the inside. So let's go ahead and set this bad boy up to the side. So do we get the, the gist of how these uh, punches work, how these cutters work? Because if we can agree that we get the gist of it, we don't necessarily need to watch me punch all these bits and pieces. I have plenty of the pernotums, so we can omit those for now. And we're gonna absolutely have to just skip the the wing because I already have those punched and I don't have a spare uh, blank. So, guess what that means? It means we're going to switch my camera real quick. Um, over here, that way Everybody doesn't have to go for the roller coaster ride while I reset reset my uh, camera up to a more appropriate position. Actually, I modified um, some GoPro bits and pieces for a GoPro. Thing. All right, there we are. We got that part going. All right, and now we have to zoom in just a little bit. All right, camera two, go ahead and pull in tight, please. Camera two, pull in tight. Boom. I like that. I think that should be good enough. You guys go ahead and give me a holler if you want me to zoom in any closer. I think that should work. Double check. All right. So there we are. Here we are. What's the date? 22nd. Get back to... Get 
rid of me there, and here we go. Let's set my little punch off to the side. All right, so we have all our bits and parts put together and assembled. And now we actually have to tie the fly and put it all together. Now what in the, what? What kind of hook is that? That's not a hook. I'm gonna go for a smaller one. Actually, I have these two different sizes. Uh, these are extended body uh, attachments, doohickeys, kebabs. Two different sizes. They sit, sit right in your vise like so. And we're going to use these to make the extended body portion of our uh, fly. I think I have one of these actually handy that are still in the package. It's a Stefano, is the company that makes them. DB Tools. A little two pack. So that's basically what we're going to be doing. Detached body. That's what they call it. A detached body tool or an extended body tool, something like that. All right, Mr. Coleman's in the house. Good evening. Hope you are doing well. So let's get this going. All right, so for my thread, I'm actually gonna go kind of skinny because I've got the practice. I've had the time. I've put the effort in. I've put the time in. I've had the hours. And I'm gonna get away with using a six ot um, or a seventy denier thread. Now, um, if you're just new to playing around with foam and just experimenting with foam, I would recommend uh, going with a little bit bigger of a thread. So, all right, just to get things started, we're gonna start our thread. Let's go right about there. And I'm not gonna wrap super tight. Let's bring my, body, my thread, I don't know, about that far. And the, th the tag end thread, I don't wanna trim that off. I've got this nice little spring here, so if your vise doesn't have um, a regal material spring or anything like that. So this is nice for so it just kind of holds that and keeps that out of the way. All right, let's get the body going. All right, again, we have our two millimeter half bodies. They are both identical. Um, if you are super nitpicky, you go ahead and trim off whatever little niblet might be hanging out on top with that is a waste of time um, that's gonna get buried you got a big chunk hanging out uh, you know there's a reason why they they made that as like a little pop-out point so let's go ahead and take our two pieces and we are going to sandwich them on right about there and proportion wise what do you know probably going in about two millimeters Nice little easy tug, right? I'm not reefing down on anything super tight. All right, one, two, three turns. I don't have to go bananas. Actually, let's go one more. We'll go number four. All right, fold that back. We'll advance our thread forward. Just like that, one. That's two. I'm gonna go one more. I'm gonna space this out just a little bit further. And I really pinch down on that with my fingers before I just start wrapping it with the thread. All right, so now at this point, here we go. This is where the hand whip finish helps, all right? Do a hand whip finish. One, whoop, we lost it. It's one, two, three. One, two, three turns. 
All right, we can go ahead and trim off our thread at that point. All right, now this, we can pull our thread forward. We're gonna carefully slide that off. Um, sometimes what you can do is you can actually just take a little bit of wax, just a little, little bit of slippery wax. You don't want a tacky wax. Anything like that, that would be ridiculous. All right, so that's the hard part. What do you think? Let's set our little uh, our DB tool off to the side. Now we're going to grab our hooks. This is a 1x strong, 2x long. All right, it's not a dry fly hook. This is a definite wet fly streamer hook because tell it's a little bit stouter because it's a 1x strong. Just like so. You know what, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit more. I think we can do better. Go over to the computer. Let's give that a try. All right, sounds good. All right. Start our thread up front, and we're gonna do a nice little thread base. Give this body something to bite in onto. And we'll trim off our tag end. I'm not worried about covering every square inch of that. I'm just laying a nice little thread base. And I'm gonna go right about there. We're gonna see how close I get because now compare and position our body. I'm looking at the front end. Does that help? Does that do anything? Not really. But I want the front end to be just behind the eye of the hook. And I want my thread, we're gonna capture that first space. So I need to go just a little bit further back. And if we went with a uh, shorter hook, we could probably do another um, section of the detached body. So I'm gonna capture that one, two, three turns. Fold my, my uh, body out. I'm gonna get a couple of wraps of thread right there. And I'm just gonna get a couple more wraps. All right, real simple. Fold that back again, and we'll advance our thread forward. A wee little bit. Now we're right at about that hook point. Thereabouts. Same thing, we're gonna give that a nice pinch with our fingers. One, two, three. Give it a little squeeze. And then some wraps just on the shank. So those wraps just on the shank of the hook uh, are really good at preventing this from spinning too fast out of control. We are gonna get some rotation in the system here um, up until the very end. That's when it um, all gets glued together. So I don't need to add any glue on the inside of this, just at the very end at the head. All right, so we got these legs. Let's check these legs out. Got two of these. We're going to do one at a time. I like to just kind of line up the back joint. It's right about the tip of the tail. Right, right here on the side. I'm going to go one for the money. And just like that, it's going to stay. Right, second one over here on the other side. And we're going to just line that up. Now we're going to do this one twice. Once, twice. I like that flare. So we'll go three, four more times. And then we'll advance our thread forward. Pinch that down. Move our thread. Alright, so now this is kind of a, a carriage in the horse. Watch the timing of the situation of things. 
So while I'm at this point, I take this opportunity because my thread is on the inside. All right, I got these little flaps. It's kind of hanging out there. And I'm not going to take too much effort. Close enough. Nice clean cut. Same on this side. Let's trim that off. All right. Just like we've been doing this whole time, we're going to give that a nice little firm pinch. We'll give that a couple of turns right there. All right. Up next. Let's go ahead and get our rubber legs. We didn't talk about our legs earlier. These are just the black bug legs. Just rubber legs. And I'm going to take one, cut it in half. Take the two halves. Have it one more time. Ooh. And go with whatever way works best for you on getting your legs, legs on. Same over here. You can hit it one time. Come over here, hit it two times. One, two. Because that equals two over here, and or three over here, and two over there. Or two and two. All right, slide those into position. We're going to trim these legs down. Don't be scared. All right, while we're there, we need to add our wing. Again, this is this is just a clear. I got dun speckled, light yellow, crayfish, crawdad, all sorts of colors. And I like to stick my my wing just a tick past the tail. two three wraps just to get that on there now we got these legs to fight don't worry Frank we'll slide that back now we're going to advance our thread forward one last time to form the head Remember, when we're messing with our foam, when we're tying with our foam, it's not, you're not trying to get it all squished in and locked down on the first turn. I want to space it out a little bit. Cinch it, cinch it, cinch it. All right, super simple. We'll finish this with a whip finish. One, two, trois. All right. Now we get to play with glue and eyes. Thought I had some eyes pulled. Yep. All right, we'll get to the eyes here in just a minute. But when we get there, we're going to be using a uh, four millimeter. Now these are all optional. This is uh, just uh, what I use and. This is the oh we got a question on the cutters. The question is what size cutters did I use? These are size six. I believe. You know now that I think about it, I don't know how how do they uh, size them? Because I might have just added size six, so I remembered what hook I have um, matched with these. I'll have to double check. We'll finish this fly and then I'll pull out my literature. If that makes sense. All right, glue, glue, glue. All right. Oh, we got to trim a little bit first. Trim that off. And we're going to even our legs up. You know what? That looks pretty good. 
Uh, maybe just a little bit shorter. You don't want these back legs to be too long because you don't want them getting caught so much in the in the gap. Size six is one and one eighth inch. Cool. I'll have to take your word for it. Bam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't say. That's right. Do not accept candy or rides from strangers unless he's your Uber or Lyft ride. All right. I like to use the gel control when I'm messing around with these because I like that the glue doesn't run. So I'll just pinch this forward and just a little dab of glue, yeah. All right, I'll close the head, suture him up, just a little squeeze. All right, working our way back, let's get our eyes. The eyes have a two, four, six, eight, we're gonna, just making sure I got enough here for us to tie with tonight. We might not make our way through all these, all this foam, but We'll keep on trying. All right, a little bit of eye action up front. Again, just enough to wet the foam. A little dab of glue ya. All right, another beautiful opportunity for the beautiful little toothpick. Because you know how good super glue loves to stick to fingers. Eyes are optional, I suppose. I like them. I suppose for added uh, floatability. You could f go with a uh, hollow doll eye like we use with our little epic blockhead poppers. All right, we got to do our pernotum. Am I saying that correctly? My uh, people that speak proper bug language vernacular. I think it's called the pernotum. It looks like a little Superman shield, if you ask me. Okay. Superman. All right, but this piece I will clean up. It's just got a little bit right there. All right, and this is going to go right back here on the top and kind of wrap around the sides. So we'll just do a little dab of glue. A little dab of glue, and a little dab of glue. Less is more, more or less. Center that on there, and then just wrap that around the sides, and give it a squeeze. And that is how I tie the Tom Seuss hopper. Now you might find a YouTube video or somebody else that calls it something else or ties it a, a slightly different way. Um, but I don't know, it's a pretty simple tie. And if I were to really sit down and crank a bunch of these out, yeah, that would be just it. I'd be able to sit down and crank a bunch of these out. All right, let me get into my literature here. So what do we think? Questions, comments, concerns. What do we think about the pattern? Do we love it, hate it, think it's cool? I think it's pretty cool. All right, well, get me back in the camera here, and I need to find my... 
thought I had some paperwork that came with the punches. Nope, just my, uh, I also have the small, medium, large. I think that might be, I'm not sure. I don't have an order form. But to uh, go back to the question, um, at least with my little container, my little holder, uh, I have a uh, size 6 written on it. So yeah, I have things all set. I've got, you know, my tan foam, my green foam, my, or my olive black foam and then I make my little kits put those all together and the kits all have little hooks and everything all ready to go so let's go ahead and uh, we'll be emailing you an inquiry um, I I don't uh, sell the kits. Uh, the kits are the punches would be available um, through your local hairline distributor. I I'm not allowed to uh, take the products out on the email worlds. So check your local uh, distributor. Uh, but if you just want to email me, all tied up, school at gmail. Or Aaron dot Husingfeld at Project Healing Waters dot org. But anyways, oh, yep. Project yeah. So you'll just go ahead and use the Project Healing Waters um, email, and I'll get it. All right, so let's do another one. We'll take my ugly mug off and we'll slide back over to the bench. Whoops. Want to go there. All right, Ben is back. He got some grub. So tonight on the menu for me was a mozzarella kind of lots of matzo Lots of matzo chicken with some broccoli and couscous. So, I mean, if you feel comfortable asking questions, I'm comfortable answering most questions. <laughs> but you could always just email me or uh, send me a message otherwise. Um, pretty much available. All right, so let's go ahead and do another one. Just like the other one. All right, remember his party starts right here. Now, if you mention it here, uh, unless I write something down, I won't remember. I'll tell you that for free. All right. I have a community we're doing a Friday, six Friday, all Friday, sent to me to distribute to Project Healing Waters, and I'm reaching out to others outside of Texas. Yeah, um, if you got flies, I'll be more than happy to uh, distribute them to uh, my participants of Project Healing Waters as soon as I can get to them. Hand delivered. Uh, up here, we are mostly bass fishing, but guess like what? All our veterans travel. So around here, at least with our program, I I guess we kind of just stick with bass flies and pike flies and such. But yeah, that'd be absolutely great. A fly tying contest every Friday. And six flies. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, definitely shoot me an email. Um, 
or shoot me a message or leave a comment on how to get a hold of you. We'll connect. Oh, faux show. Just like that. Yeah, probably. I've I ha I do have some space. Um, that'd be fun. Getting, getting a six flies in the mail every week. Yeah, absolutely. I'd be more than happy. Um, and then we can actually get uh, get. We'll take care of it legit. We won't just half halfway do it. Get in kind donation forms and everything if they want. A few turns back there. And a couple more. Answer thread. Give it a nice pinch. Secure that down. Two, three. I mean, that'd be great for our small little program. Um, how many participants are we up to? I think we're up to nine, eight or nine on the on the regular regular outpatient status. We used to meet at the Saint Cloud Hospital or Saint Cloud VA. And we don't do that anymore on account of the COVID. There we go. Worked out pretty well. Go ahead and apply the fly to the hook. I mean, if it's going to be an overabundance amount of flies, we might might consider going uh, direct to Healing Waters headquarters. But we'll talk for sure. I'll get you my phone number, and we can. I'm more of an actual phone conversationist opposed to just text messages and emails. Who else prefers a good phone call opposed to just emails and texts? Emails and texts are good. They have their place in the world, but there's a lot more that can be done. I like talking on the phone. Sometimes when I call f friends, the, the phone calls last a while. I mean, it's It's hours sometimes, catching up, reminiscing. All right, let's line that up. So we got to take our thread back just a little, little bit more. All right, we'll set that on there. around the shank and then maybe one or two more back here 
And that's it. I mean, that sucker's on. That's it, where that's going. You know where that's where. Alright, we're, we're doing well. Give that a nice little pinch. And we'll get our body on there first. Couple of wraps. One, two, three. And some wraps around the shank of the hook to help keep it from spinning. It's not foolproof. Or foolproof. Yep, we'll set this right about there. I like to line up the legs with the back of the back of that tail. Yep, we'll just do one wrap for now. Just to hold it there. So we don't have to over wrap it. I'd say fishing these, the worst that's happened is that eyes popped off. Well, I take that back. I've had a, I've actually had a, a I think I had a pike hit one of these. Whatever it was, it chewed it up all the heck. Right, Fold that back. And we'll advance our thread forward. Now while our thread is hanging out on the inside, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to cut this little tag end off of that. Just like so. Here. I got a, I got a text asking me if I'm available. <laughs> it's like I can't, I can't text. I can't even respond to a text message right now because my phone is my camera. My camera is my phone. Oh boy! A couple of turns, switch that down. And as we take those wraps around that shank, around that shank of the hook, for each segment that we move forward. This whole thing starts to spin just a little bit less. But the the final insurance is the glue. A little insurance policy. All right, we need our rubber legs. Again, these are just black bug legs. Multiply by division. Fold that in once. Now we've got two. Fold it over twice. And now we've got four. Same as before. Set it on this side. We're going to go once. Because that's enough to hold it. Hit me one time, oh. Uh. Hit me two times, oh, uh, oh. Uh. So we can go over here. One, two. So we got all the wraps we need now. At least to get it on. Here we go. Give it a couple more wraps. Oh, we gotta not forget our wing. We've done that a few times. Alright, again, this is just the clear. segment. Each time we just pinch down just a little bit. 
I like that. Advance my thread forward one last time. And we'll finish this with a whip finish. One, two, three. Alright. Let's give this a little dab of glue up front. Oh, let's go ahead and do all our trimming first. Trim off that extra wing. Shorten those legs just a little bit. Time to replace these scissors soon. We're having some difficulty with the rubber legs. I don't know, they haven't been sharpened since. Hmm. Last fall? Maybe, I don't know. Alright, little dab of glue, ya. Right there on the inside of the head. Be sure to. Get it right on the shank. Give it a squeeze. Right behind the eye of the hook. Let's go ahead and let's do our eyes. Work our way from the front to back. I guess the order of operations on gluing stuff isn't that critical, but. Sometimes you don't want to get super glue on your nice bodkin. Again, this is this is how I tie them. This is how I've settled into tying this pattern. I really enjoy it. It's a fun pattern. You know, if you got people who aren't fly anglers or know anything about fly fishing, you could spend all the time and effort and tie the world's most beautiful, maybe not the world's most beautiful, maybe not like a big old fancy classic salmon fly pad with some jungle cock and all that other junk on it. But if you showed this in front of somebody and threw them a, threw them a woolly bugger, what do you think of these? They'd be like, wow, this is amazing. It looks just like it. They would have no idea what a woolly bugger is. Uh, I miss the woolly bugger. Let's go ahead and trim off our little tag end on that one. side not much on the side because all the excess is going to get pushed down in there and you want to avoid getting this uh, super glue onto your rubber legs because then your rubber legs they lose their bounce make sure it's all squared I think we got this side, no problemo. And we might have to add a little dab of glue down here. Yep. As I suspected. Don't take much.
Here we go. All right, what do we think? There's one, there's two. There's a hopper on my shoe. So who has seen or saw, I guess what's the correct, what is the correct tense on this? Who has seen a hopper or who has saw, I guess it would be who has seen a hopper. Any grasshopper viewers out there, what do we got? Is it almost hopper season? Terrestrials? Well, yeah, of course it will fish. And the beautiful thing is, is I didn't even have to come up with this pattern. <laughs> uh, Tomsu did. It's a nice pattern. I really like it. Um, when I used to teach uh, fly tying to beginners and intermediates out in the public, um, outside of Project Healing Waters, uh, this was one of the kits that I I put together. I put together uh, woolly bugger kits, clouser minnow kits, hoppers, and poppers. Hopper, popper, clouser, bugger. What else in the world do you need? Yeah. The fish whisperer has informed us that yes, there are hoppers out now. NC Doc has the dragonflies on the water. I really don't fish much as far as dragonfly patterns. I really don't fish too much surface. Surface flies, come to think of it. Um, I don't know. If I were to go fishing tomorrow, what fly would I throw? What would be my first one? Uh, maybe some sort of minnow, I think. Might be, maybe a clouser. I don't know. Water's getting deep. We're up to about seven, 8,000 now. Totally different than the 3,000 <laughs> that it's been at. Uh, we'll see how long it lasts. But what I'm going to do is I need to take a quick pause for the cause... And when I come back, we're going to do one, maybe two more. Quick pause for the cause. I got a text message that I got to respond to via somebody else. Let's go ahead and switch that. All right. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. We will be right back.
All right, we are back. All right, so we can cross Tom Sue's Hopper off our list. I believe next week. I think next week might be a muddler minnow kind of day. What do you guys think? Muddler minnow, muddler minnow. Did we tie to muddler? I think we did tie muddlers while we were here last. Earlier in the series. I think so. I don't know. I don't know what we want to tie next week. Oh, we got a question here. Josh says, oh, he might need his waiting staff. Yeah, waiting staffs are good, especially when the water starts pushing. Um, and then Dave's asking Josh about getting his bobbin fixed. Uh, he was having some issues nicking his thread. That's no good. Well, what is good is tie more hoppers. Let's go ahead and hop, hop, hop over to the bench and see about tying another one. I think the cats are hip to where I'm at now. I don't know, I hear him clawing at the door. I want in. No, cats. Oh, I did it again. Let's go ahead and hop that one off. get our extended or detached body tool the DB tool as it's called a little bit of extra thread there a little extra long tag end Take our two body halves. Again, these are two millimeters. If we want to get picky and fancy, we'll spend our time all day trying to trim that down, but who cares? It's going to get hair done. the thread make a segment that's the thread And if you haven't learned how to hand whip finish, great opportunity right here. So if you need an excuse to learn how to hand whip finish.
As if we need an excuse to learn. Getting a little, um, making me upset. I'm not upset about it, but it no longer pleases me. All right, size six hook. This is a one X strong, two X long. I suppose you could go with a lighter wire, but if you're going for them bigger fishies, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, there's different ways to approach the, uh, I don't know, my brain's toast. Somebody asked some questions. I'm, I'm running out of things to jibber jabber about today, tonight. Today, tonight, ta da. Minnesota mask mandate goes into effect Saturday. Josh, I'll, I don't know if you have. Dave's contact information or not, but uh, with Dave's permission, I'd be more than happy to uh, relay that. All right, let's go ahead and get our body attached just a little bit further back. That'll do it. Nice tight wraps. And I suppose if you really wanted to be really slick about it, you could get away with not cutting off your thread when you're putting your body on and then just transfer everything over. But I think by doing that, you also skip the step of laying a little thread base so, I don't know. It's up to you. Let's go ahead and hold that back. We'll advance our thread forward. Again, the, the trick is, is just not pulling too tight and it's not, uh, your thread's not cutting into your foam. But you want enough tension on it that it holds it all together. I'll start with the near side with one. One wrap, one wrap of thread. That's all it needs. Why go to bananas? We'll match it. Match it, match it. I like it. All right, again, while we're on the inside, our thread is in there, so. I know I can come onto this side and not worry about cutting my thread. And I can go to this side, not worrying about cutting my thread. All right. All right, folks, let's talk. Let's talk fishing movies. 
Alright. What's a good fishing movie out there? Other than... A river runs through it. We're talking fly fishing here. Who knows of a good fly fishing film... That nobody's heard of. around the shank and a wrap or two more around the foam. So I had to change my lawnmower blades today. Because my blades don't just get dull, they disintegrate. And I think it's our sandy soil is the guilty culprit. Holy smokes, who's watching me? Who's in charge of this show? What the heck? You know what this guy does not have? Does not have a wing. And that wing is supposed to go on right there with those legs. So, what did we do in the military? What did we do in the military? What did we do in the military? What did we do? What did we do? Did we do? Did we do? Oh, yeah, we adapt and overcome. I don't want that crossing all over the place. We're going to drop it over right through there with that. And bada bing. Ha 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 ha. I may not be able to tie a perfect fly all the time, but I tell you what, I've learned to recover from a lot of different mistakes. The, the last thing you can think of a mistake when you're fly tying is that it's toast. It's done. I mean, yeah, there's catastrophic failures. Don't get me wrong. And those ones <laughs> those can be kind of funny or they can make you cry. up a little bit so what I do is I kind of eyeball one side fold them down and come close to matching on the other side it'll work all right little dab of glue yeah that's all we need Inside the head, we'll make our little glue brain. Nice tight pinch. And 
It's that easy. Let's get a little drop up here for the first die. Oh boy, there it is. I lost I thought I lost my toothpick. Fancy tools, and we're using toothpicks. There we go. I like it. All right, Pernotum. All right, so there we go. Land. Of Little Rivers is a good documentary. All right. I'm gonna pause for the cause. Because me and my brain injury will not remember that. <laughs> I just found uh, some other notes. Okay, Land of Little Rivers. Land. Definitely check that one out. Another good one to check out is called Kiss. I believe it's called Kiss the Water. Kiss the Water. Very artistic film. Uh, I believe her name was Maggie. An, or, uh, an, I believe she was. An, she's an ish. She's from a Lind. Yeah, Ireland. Is she Irish? Scot Scottish? I really don't remember off the top of my head. But anyway, she just tied these beautiful, beautiful flies. And these are like back in the... Back in the day. Tying flies for like Prince Charles and... My royalty. Yeah, buddy. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, a little more dab. A little dab in there. It's the one downside. To YouTube because it's more or less kind of a one-way conversation I know there's ways for me to like if you sent me an email I could navigate through the computer through the encoder and yada 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 so Night Hopper. Here we go. Any special requests for flies to tie next week? Case caddis, muddler minnows, a mouse. I think we'll play, play with the deer here. We got the bench pretty much cleared off. Um, so maybe we'll do something with deer here.
Mondays I do my freestyles and a cup of coffee. Monday mornings, 9 o'clock central. Check it out. Be there, be square. I have a lot of fun on Mondays. I, I, I wake up Monday morning and I, I have no idea what I'm going to tie. Um, I usually get breakfast going, get dinner, or get Jess going off to work. Um, and then I come down here and we'll just see what happens. A Dahlberg diver with the muddler mouse. I have what I need to tie along. Hey, Miguel. Good evening. We are talking fishing museum or fishing movies, fly fishing movies. Um, in addition to what we might be tying next week, uh, I gotta catch this one. What is it called? Low School of Life. Lost World of Mr. Hardy. So, at the campfire, I believe it's called the Campfire Lodge, on the Madison River, Upper Madison, uh, I think it's south of Heb... No, north... Anywhere. Anyways, Campfire Lodge. Great pancakes. Um, where was I going with this? I have no idea. My Oh, the Hardy. Hardy. The world of Mr. Hardy. Um, so, there's uh, a poster. I mean, it's a, it's a fly shop. It's a small little breakfast joint. Um, it's... I don't know. It's it's a nice little place. Anyways, in the men's room, it's got your typical setup. And on the back side of the door coming in and out is what I refer to as the Hardy Girl. And this this is the class because it, all you see is just the silhouette of her face, this beautiful red hair, and she's got her boots on. And, you know, it's it's so tasteful, so classy. I don't know. I, I, I fell in love with her. Kind of like the Sun Made Raisins girl. Wow, beautiful. I don't know. You spend so much time alone sometimes. You, you just kind of start seeing things. I, I was really into Archie Comics when I was in Iraq. I had a, a friend who just passed them off to me. And boy... I tell you what, after a while, your mind's eye, you close your eyes, and for me, it was just, boy, I wish Betty and Veronica would both fight over me. <laughs> uh, but what do I know? The doll bird. How do we spell the Dahlberg? D A H L B E R G. Someday, I hope to have a world famous fly. And so far, it hasn't happened. I have not reinvented the wheel hard enough. But. I don't know. Let's crank out one more of these hoppers. I'll quit my jibber jabbering, at least with my face. So I'm going to jibber jabber. Might as well tie a fly, right? 
This time we won't forget the wing. Right? Check out the UFO. I don't know about that, man. I'm a believer. I believe in the UFOs. Is that what it's called? The UFO? The UFO by Stevens. By Steves. The Google will catch on. All right, let's tie another one. From the top, where were we? All right. I've got a half an hour for this, so you don't have to go too fast. All right. We'll start with our detached body accessory. All right. Oh, one thing I can show you is... So if you don't have a detached body kit, toolkit, check this out. Let me get this pulled up. I don't remember exactly what that was, but it was a big old hook. I cut the hook off, and I cut the eye off it. I sat there and I filed the burr. But, I mean, that's... It works as, as a detached body accessory. Oh, the UFO. I'm going to be looking for the UFO Wonder movies if I don't change my note. So that's this is my makeshift. Extended body tool. Now what this doesn't do is it doesn't I guess it doesn't really matter because that's the that's the end we're using. And I guess its diameter is a little a lot thicker. But I'm gonna use the right tool for the right job. If you're in a pinch Cut up hook works. All right. So with my olive hoppers. Sometimes I'll take my olive marker or a darker colored marker and just kind of scuff up the foam after the fly is tied just to give it a little pattern. I said it once, I'll say it a million times. Imagination is your only limitation here, folks. Up, you just fold it back, slide it forward. 
when I'm pinching the foam, I'm actually using my fingernails to uh, guide the thread. Pinch down like this, and it just slides right in. Ooh, that's nice. All right, we'll do a rip finish here. for that for an actual hook. Oh yeah, lucky 13. On the 13th, you gotta go out and catch yourself a sunny. We'll get our size six hook in there. I love gold stars. I I had an elementary school teacher in fourth grade. I, I mean, there was all sorts of prizes and rewards for doing good. And I don't know if it was just like she discovered at one point, like if she, like they're kind, it was like a kindness dollar. Like she saw you do something kind, you, you earn a kindness dollar. And uh, like, once a month or I don't know what whatever the increment was but you get to cash in your your credits your your cash your cool cash your kids cash I think it was I think she called it cool cash but you trade it in for you know extra packs of pencils erasers pencil boxes you know legit school supplies but you know just a little bit cooler and it was a way to motivate us, so I don't know. I like the gold stars. All right, let's go ahead and get this in. Fold you back, get a wrap or two or three, and then we'll get this again. A couple more turns. that electric slide forward I like that we'll do a couple wraps just around the shank now we're ready for our legs I think that should be a thing for every every 13th. Every month on the 13th, I'm going to try to catch a sunny or a panfish. Something. Because at least around here, they're year-round. They're available. Now it's going to be hard. So there's ice on the water. All right. Don't let me forget the wing this time. <laughs>
perform a little little magic show, all right? Take our our wig. Let's just see you guys are gonna like this. Clearly see that, right? Cut that once. We got two pieces, right? Take our two pieces. Alright, we'll cut that into four. But if you take them, you stretch it. It goes back to its original original length. Oh, just kidding. That's one thing I kind of miss doing is performing card tricks for people in front of an actual live audience. There's magic you can do in front of cameras and junk like that, but I don't know. I kind of miss that. So we got we got a pretty good sized crowd still. Thanks for uh, sticking with me tonight. I am really appreciative of everybody hanging out. And since we've got a small captive audience, I'm going to ask the question. During quarantine, I want you to let me know two things. What's something that you've done really nice? For yourself and what's something really nice that you've done to help somebody else other than like your immediate family because I can say I did the dishes today that doesn't count but what I can say is you know this morning I went over and I checked in on my neighbor Lyndon Let's see how he's doing And he's getting better. He's got a sore. And we're taking care of him. Because that's what we do. So that's my question. That's my question for the day. Question for the night. What have you done for yourself? And what have you done for somebody else? Because you have to take care of yourself. That's... That's something you can't forget. And it's something a lot of us, at least us uh, veterans, military type people, we forget how to take care of ourselves because we're so focused on taking care of others. At least for me. You know, I, this quarantining and staying... I, I, I hate saying quarantine because I didn't quarantine, but staying home you know I've it's opened up so much time I it's freed me so much but I from volunteering so I don't know it's gonna be it's gonna take quite a bit for me to go back work and bingo it's gonna be a while um but, you know, my drive and passion for helping others will continue. So, you know, taking care of my neighbor, Lyndon, that's kind of my go-to helping others thing. And, you know, something nice I've done for myself. Check these out. We're going to play with these on Monday. These are from... A new company called Minnesota Fly Tool. And it's a hair packing flare tool. So we're going to experiment with that on Monday. So that's a little sneak peek. If you're here, you're in the know.
All right, let's play with some glue. dab on the inside. Just a little dab of glue, yeah? Alright, we'll get our eyes ready. And these are four millimeter eyes. Just the right size for our little hopper head. It's actually, it's been a while since I've tied these. First time all year, at least. First, first hoppers. Tom Seuss Hoppers of 2020. Let's try that again. Let me get back up there, you. Right, time for the prenotum. Oops. Dabble glue, yeah. Let's do this. Take our little Superman shield. Squeeze. You get some sunnies chasing this. They might. They're gonna have to be a big one to to get a bite of it, a legit bite. But there it is. One last time. I think that's going to be it for tonight. Let's go ahead. And wind down. So that, that that's it. From beginning to end on those hoppers. We... Punched the bodies. We did everything with it. Everything but grow the foam in the legs. What do you guys think? Sink or swim? I think it's going to be crisscross awesome sauce. So there we have it. That's the Tom Sue's Hopper in black with four millimeter eyes on a size six. I wish I had my 
Com Sues or my River Road Creations um, order form sheet. Handy. I thought I had it with a, a little box there, but it's not there. Anyways, uh, yeah, those punches are available on or at your local fly shops. Check them out. Tom Sue's Hoppers. Pretty cool stuff. You know, this isn't, um, I'm not endorsed by them. I'm not sponsored or anything. This is not a paid promotion. This is for you, my friends, my Project Healing Water participants. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up. I want everybody to have a wonderful week. Uh, if you're in Minnesota this weekend, uh, mask up if you're going going out. Uh, out and indoors. There's a whole... Read into it. There's a whole bunch of... Read up on it. There's a whole bunch of... Void were prohibited not available at all stores. Maybe no to cause cancer. The state of California. All right. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight, folks. We'll do this again next week. It'll be, what, the 28th of July. Uh, quick question here. Do the cutters come in smaller sizes? Yes, I believe so. I believe I've, ha I've got the mediums. I believe that's the size. I believe they have it in three sizes, a small, medium, and large. And each cover a section of size hooks. And I believe I've got the medium. I think. All I know is on my on my thing it's it's labeled size six hook. So I know to what to match up with that. I mean you could go with a smaller hook, you could probably go with a little bit bigger hook. Uh, but I think for everything, it's all relative to itself. I mean, you can go with a shorter shank hook, but I, I like the 2X long. So, I don't know. We're going to leave it at that, I suppose. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bail five minutes early. Uh, I need better headphones. I need a better microphone. Maybe I'll call the boss, see what we can arrange. Maybe I'll do a GoFundMe. If anybody has any good suggestion on like a legit gaming headset that's not going to squish my ears too hard, that I guess I can plug into a USB or whatever, let me know in the comments below. Alright. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Stay healthy, stay safe. Happy tying. And yes, sir, you betcha. Tight lines. Peace. Thank you.